There was a tantalizing glimpse of the past at the Physiological Society's 1976 centenary meeting, when an early film was presented showing Professor, later to be Sir Joseph Barcroft, demonstrating his method of determining the dissociation curve of the haemoglobin oxygen system. This was an experiment he carried out many times in the mountains of Peru and Tenerife, when in the early part of this century, he was investigating the effect high altitude had on the blood, work which was to lead to the publication of his well-known textbook, The Respiratory Function of the Blood. The film, which was found by chance in an obscure corner of Cambridge, was made by Sir Joseph in his own laboratories in the mid-1930s. It has now been examined and compared with his published papers by Sir Joseph's son, Professor Henry Barcroft, and by Dr. Peter Goodford, Dr. Frank Norrington, and others in the Biophysics and Biochemistry Department of the Wellcome Research Laboratories. The commentary, which has been added, is an attempt to clarify the film for modern audiences and interpret the original scientific experiment as faithfully as possible. It is spoken by Professor Henry Barcroft. When my father led scientific expeditions to remote parts of the world, he had to develop robust but lightweight equipment which he could take anywhere and which could produce a full oxygen dissociation curve from a small amount of blood. The admiring onlooker on the right is Dr. Adrian, later to become Lord Adrian. On the racks, this side, he would normally mount eight Barcroft differential manometers, although for this demonstration, he is using only one. The Barcroft differential manometer was a forerunner of the Warburg manometer. Since both sides were sealed, it had the advantage of being automatically compensated for temperature variation and was unaffected by changes in barometric pressure. It was therefore ideal for use in the field. However, because it worked neither at constant pressure nor constant volume, the mathematics was somewhat complicated, and perhaps this was the reason why it was not more widely adopted. This tubular vessel is a tonometer which can be used to equilibrate a small blood sample with the gas mixture inside. A funnel serves as a convenient mercury reservoir, although the health authorities might have something to say about it today. Now he has a tonometer filled with nitrogen. His test sample is probably blood which he will already have defibrinated 
by whipping with a feather or a wire brush. Alternatively, it might be a solution of hemoglobin. We can't be sure. Either way, it makes little difference to the demonstration. To make the gas mixture required, he must introduce oxygen in the form of air into the tonometer. At the moment, he is only measuring the volume of air approximately. He will analyze it later. Now for his blood song. Notice how careful he is to preserve a drop of mercury in the bottom. This will enable him to purge air from the tap when he comes to remove the sample for analysis. Now, before continuing with the experiment proper, my father is going to digress a little and show us the effect temperature has on the oxygen hemoglobin equilibrium. Blood in contact with air is fully oxygenated and bright red as the reference sample at the top shows. The fact that they are both the color of arterial blood indicates that even with the small volume of air present in the test tonometer, the solution is largely saturated with oxygen in the cold. But now it is a different story. At a higher temperature, the reference sample is still bright red, but the test sample has turned the dark red of venous blood. In other words, heat has driven off the oxygen by altering the shape of the dissociation curve. and this effect is reversible. But now back to the main experiment.
although you can't see it, the little tube contains two chambers. Into one of these he can introduce potassium ferrocyanide in such a way that it only comes in contact with the blood after the monomer has been sealed. The ferrocyanide drives off all the bound oxygen, causing a deflection on his manometer, and the experiment was ingeniously designed to be independent of the quantity of blood present in the tube. So now he can calculate the degree of saturation of the blood with oxygen. He wants to plot this degree of saturation against the partial pressure of oxygen in the gas above and a conventional Haldane gas analyzer forms part of his traveling apparatus. See how he has inverted his tonometer so as to draw off the gas phase instead of the liquid. So now he can start to plot his dissociation curve. The vertical axis is the percentage saturation of the hemoglobin in the sample with oxygen. And this he plots against the oxygen partial pressure. With eight manometers and eight tonometers, each containing a different amount of oxygen, he could, and frequently did, plot a full dissociation curve. The curve which is the key to understanding the respiratory function of the blood. This old film, then, gives us just a glimpse of how Joseph Barcroft conducted his pioneering research, both in his laboratory and in expeditions which he led to many remote and inhospitable corners of the world.